Hi, my name is Ben. Welcome to my YouTube channel, which is focused on managing eczema naturally, by which I mean without the use of topical corticosteroids. And the objective being that I share with you what I've learned so that you can try to do things and change your lifestyle in order to manage your symptoms of eczema to the point where you don't really have any itching or rashes. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, foods that eczema sufferers are commonly allergic to, as well as foods that seem to trigger eczema. Um, a bit about my um, journey in terms of working out what foods were right for me and how you can identify what foods may trigger your eczema. And um, then I'm going to talk a little bit about how that fits into a proper sort of plan um, which incorporates diet and nutrition um, to the point where you're not going to be uh, missing out on any key nutrients. Okay, so firstly, there have been quite a few studies looking at food and eczema. And in particular, there was a 2012 study in which 319,000 teenagers um, were given three or four uh, three or more servings of fast food per week and the study found that those who ate that amount of fast food had a 39% elevated risk of severe asthma and also an increased, chance, uh, increased severity of eczema. And a lot of people who suffer from eczema know um, instinctively that they uh, have particular foods that they should avoid. Um, others don't and aren't aware that um, food can have an impact. And um, there are foods which are particularly risky or common, common for eczema sufferers to be allergic to. And those include wheat, some dairy products, peanuts and nuts, fish, egg and soy products. Um, I think in terms of my journey, uh, I knew that there was a connection between food and eczema right probably from the age when I started to get it at 14 or 15, um, but I wasn't quite sure which foods did what and um, I did eliminate dairy products and didn't eat much wheat for many years, but um, continue to eat foods which now I, I realise have an effect on my eczema or I have an allergic reaction to. And those foods, um, to, it took me time to work out what those foods were. So hopefully what I'm going to share with you now will help you to um, identify your allergies quickly and then move on to a diet plan which is going to be safer for you and may help to reduce your itching. Okay, so um, the first thing that you can do is start with um, a elimination diet. So by that I mean only eat foods which you know are okay and don't trigger your eczema. I mean the problem is how do you know that? And I'm going to give you some suggestions of foods to eliminate later in the video which might give you a basic um, diet plan that will allow you to run an elim elimination diet on top of. But basically what an elim elimination diet is, is um, basically noting down the foods that you suspect and the amount of food that you consume and the length of time between when you eat it and when there's a reaction. So usually a reaction will happen in sort of straight away or within two hours, but it can be longer. And then if you get significant symptoms from eating that food, the next step is to avoid that food um, for several weeks to see if the eczema gets better. It may be one type of food, it may be several. So um, you want to sort of work through one food at a time and eat quite a simple you know, diet with only maybe three or four foods in each meal. And if that isn't helpful or if you want to get answers quicker, you can also go to an allergist or maybe talk to a doctor about getting um, some allergy testing. One is a skin proof test in which um, uh, some sort of particles of food are put into the skin and then um, a, a, the, any re allergic reaction is tested. Um, then there's another one which is called a radioactive allergy sensitivity test in which a blood sample is taken and then food particles are 
mixed with that blood to see if there's um, an immune response. And I mean, my research suggests that both can be really helpful, but uh, they're not always that accurate. So it's probably worth going ahead with them because it might save you a lot of time in terms of the elimination diet anyway. Um, but in particular, as I said earlier, uh, those, the, the allergies and the foods that you want to be in, include in your elimination diet as, as ones that potentially need eliminating are wheat, dairy products, nuts, fish, um, egg and soy products. So that's, I don't know, tofu or soybeans, um, soy milk. Um, as well as what I've just gone through, there are foods and substances which nutritionists generally agree are damaging or can be damaging to our health if consumed in large quantities over a long period of time. And they tend to, these foods tend to correspond with what many eczema sufferers, um, it, it, with many eczema sufferers itching. So the, the foods that I'm going to sort of talk about now um, are commonly known amongst eczema sufferers to contribute to eczema. Uh, firstly, oh by the way, there's an, a corresponding article on my website with this video which goes through what I'm going through now and includes all of the links to the research. So if you want to, if you want to have a look at any of the studies that I've read which support what I say now, um, have, have a look on the website and I'll link it below um, this video. So firstly, concentrated sugar. So white uh, refined sugar and simple sugar such as fructose corn syrup can be damaging to our bodies and many eczema sufferers benefit from eliminating them many or, or most concentrated sugars from their diet so lactose in milk can be um, problematic maple syrup fructose syrup um, molasses glucose sugar substitutes such as NutraSweet, aspartame and saccharin and um, some eczema sufferers even have a problem with um, fruits, which are particularly tropical fruits or very sweet fruits. Um, those, you know, the, these sugars, as I mentioned previously, there have been links between um, overgrowth of candida in the um, gut and eczema. And some of those fruits are known to encourage candida, but, uh, you know, for whatever reason, they seem to be uh, a danger to eczema sufferers. Um, also, store or pasteurized juices can be dangerous. Um, we think that you know something like an orange juice from the store is healthy, but actually it's had the fiber removed, so it's got a high glycemic index, which means that the sugar's released, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that means that the sugar is released into the blood um, quickly and can cause a spike in, in blood sugar. And um, also, because they're pasteurized, they, many of the nutrients aren't available. So they, they can be potentially, potentially uh, risky for, for eczema sufferers. Um, wheat, but grains, and in particular products made from re refined grains, can be a problem. So um, many people are sort of intolerant to, to wheat and wheat products, but in particular they contain proteins called... Um, Glut uh, for example, gluten, albumins and globulins, which are common allergens and can con uh, contribute to intestinal permeability. Now, as I mentioned in a previous video, um, many naturopaths link eczema to uh, leaky gut or intestinal permeability. And there has been research which shows that wheat can um, increase uh, intestinal, per intestinal permeability as well. And so removing gluten is often a key step for eczema sufferers in terms of reducing their symptoms and managing the problem. Um, as well as that, the refined, refined products uh, made from wheat are, tend to be worse than actual sort of whole wheat, like whole wheat bread. So white bread or things like um, white ro uh, uh, pizza, uh, cereals made from wheat, pastries, cookies, pasta, noodles, pretzels, waffles, muffins, all of those foods have had the fibre removed, which means that they still contain the gluten, but um, they're low in nutrients and they have a high glycemic index, which means that you're basically consuming empty calories and not 
and getting the nutrition that you need from your food for your body and your cells to be strong. Um, so I recommend that you try to avoid wheat for a while at least while you're on the elimination diet and products made from wheat. In addition, um, some eczema sufferers seem to have pro uh, problems with other grain, grains and even legumes like beans or, or lentils. So you just you know just be careful. They tend to be things like quinoa or brown rice tend to be much better than wheat, but um, it's, they're definitely something that you want to look at. And the safest um, form of carbohydrate tends to be things like sweet potato, but of course it you know diff or other root vegetables, but it differs between different eczema sufferers. So you know be aware of that and I think you know try removing bread first of all and then you know if you do have an allergy to that and it helps you you might want to look at eliminating other foods. The type of oils that you use um, for your cooking um, can have an impact on eczema and certainly have an impact on health so seeds and oils derived from plants like sunflower oil and canola oil can become oxidized and rancid when used for cooking and they can cause free radical damage to our cells, which I believe is something to do with oxidization. And, th I mean, and um, there's also tests and studies that show a correlation between cancer, autoimmune disease, aging and heart disease, it, disease with the consumption of polyunsaturated fats used for cooking. So, you know, the plant oils like sunflower oil and canola oil or margarine, for example. And so, uh, what you should do when you cook or when you dress your food with oils is use um, traditional fats, uh, so butter for example, unless you're intolerant to dairy, um, but ver uh, virgin olive oil is, or extra virgin olive oil is good, it's important that it's virgin because it's l less processed, um, coconut oil and maybe some other animal fats, those tend to be less problematic for eczema sufferers and can make a, make a difference and are also shown by nutritionists to be more beneficial, to, well, to be beneficial to our health rather than detrimental. Um, so going along the same lines, processed foods tend to not be um, as good for an eczema sufferer and generally in terms of nutrition. So anything with additives, preservatives, pesticide, um, pesticides, emulsifiers and um, and other, I don't, I don't know, other, other additives which are used for preservation or for flavour can be a problematic. So, you know, what, what's recommended is that you eat a whole foods diet which is reasonably fresh and doesn't come out of a bottle or a can, but, you know, it's bought, you know, it's bought in its whole form and then you cook it yourself. Even, for example, you know, make your own soups rather than take canned soups or, or packaged soups. And, um, you know, many processed foods are kind of designed to be hyper rewarding and trick our brains into eating more than we need. So, you know, this also includes things like crisps and, you know, all junk foods, um, fizz fizzy drinks with, you know, various preservatives, or, um, you know, things like chocolate and sweets, you know, all, all of it's refined food which is not natural and doesn't occur in nature and is associated with, with health problems and which many eczema sufferers, uh, sufferers benefit from removing from their diet. Um, stimulants and drugs, you probably think I'm sort of preaching to you, I'm not, I'm <laughs> trying, to, trying to help you um, in terms of just reducing your symptoms, reducing inflammation in your body, increasing your, you know, your nutrition in order to improve your body strength. So alcohol, cigarettes and coffee um, are, all, are all, you know, mildly toxic to the body depending on how much you consume and um, they, can <clears throat> they can increase uh, eczema um, so you want to eliminate them from your diet for a while and they can also, alcohol is also risky because it can cause liver damage and also it can um, it can increase the incidence of, ex of, of uh, leaky gut. And table salt, a lot of foods contain table salts and um, we often just put table salt on our foods but actually it's um, demineralized which means that it's processed 
so that the minerals which are normally present in, nat in natural salts have been removed. Um, that means the body has more difficulty processing it, but it also means we, it doesn't have the nutritional value that, that other salts do. So you want to um, replace your table salt with a natural salt, like a, a Celtic sea salt or a Him Himalayan salt instead. Dairy products. Some people remove milk from their diet and no longer suffer from symptoms of eczema. Um, so along with wheat, I would say dairy is definitely one to include in an elimination diet. And, you know, I mean, another way you could do is try not eating it for, it for a while and see if your symptoms uh, improve. In particular, milk is problematic. Um, so real cheeses and natural yoghurt, seemed like a Greek yoghurt, seem to be better for many eczema sufferers. Um, but, you know, some don't have a problem. So I'd recommend having a look into it. Um, you know, there are some sort of nutritionists, particularly in the paleo primal um, diet community, who think that many humans haven't actually developed um, the capability to properly process um, the proteins in, uh, in dairy products. Um, I think one is casein. And um, they also say that, you know, many people are intolerant because we're just simply not evolved to drink the milk of a another creature. I mean, certainly we can say that's true for eczema sufferers who are allergic to it um, or intolerant to it, but, you know, other people seem to do quite well on dairy. So it varies between individuals and um, it's worth something, worth including an elimination diet. Um, other animal products, um, you know, you want to, you want to, not, you, you shouldn't be removing foods that you really enjoy um, if you're not sure whether or not they cause eczema or not. But some, some animal products are better for you than others. So the better animal products tend to be um, grass-fed um, grass anim from, from grass-fed animals like um, grass-fed beef rather than grain-fed um, and also wild-caught fish rather than grain-fed. And um, the processed meats, like luncheon meats or many sausages, um, often uh, include additives and things like iodized salt, which, as we've already discussed, you want to be careful of. So, um, and also, many eczema sufferers have problems with either egg whites or egg yolks or both. Um, you might find that you're okay with egg yolks, which are very, you know, highly nutritious, but you're not okay with egg whites. So, definitely experiment with those. Experiment with you know, if you think you're allergic to a particular type of, uh, of meat because you ate something processed like sausages containing pork or something, you know, try eating pork in its whole form and see if, you ha if it still has an impact. Okay, so a summary there, and I know it's a lot, <laughs> I know it's a lot to, to consider, um, but, you know, if you can take steps to remove those diet or, or those from your diet, those foods from your diet, or at least do an elimination diet which excludes them, then you should um, notice a improvement in your symptoms. My research indicates that most eczema sufferers do benefit enormously from removing those foods from their diet, and um, it, it may well benefit you. I think it's worth a try. Um, you might be concerned that you can't go without certain types of food or that you'll miss it too much. Um, actually, it gets easier. So, you know, you do, I, you do say, for example, you re remove sugars, you know, process sugars from your diet. The first couple of two, three days you'll have cravings and they might go on for longer, but it becomes easier after time. And that's, that's the same with any foods. And there are still a lot of any foods that, you know, that aren't good for you that you remove. And there are still a lot of foods um, which are, still, are available to you when you remove um, the foods that I've mentioned in this video. So, I mean, in particular, you know, you can eat nearly all green vegetables. You should be all right with, you may be all right with root vegetables, but, you know, not, you don't know that yet. Most fruits, particularly berries, the low glycemic fruits. Um, some dairy products, maybe not all, but, you know, things like natural yogurt might be okay for you and things like avocado some nuts and seeds might be okay although you've got to be careful with those um, coconut tends to be um, one that is less likely to cause allergic reactions um, oils you know things like coconut oil um, extra virgin olive oil uh, you tend to be okay 
um, fish, meat, poultry, you know, providing you're not allergic to them, you can make those whole foods kind of the cornerstone of your diet and thereby um, hopefully reduce your symptoms. So just to summarise, um, foods that you want to look at eliminating from your diet or, or at least eliminating for a while to see if it makes a difference are grains, particularly wheat and products derived from white flour like bread, pastries, cakes, wheat noodles, pasta, pizza, waffles, that kind of thing. Um, dairy products, particularly milk, but maybe other foods like, like cheese as well. Um, anything containing refined sugar, so sweets, um, sweetened yogurts, processed foods, junk foods, and soft drinks. Um, stimulants like alcohol, caffeine, and tobacco. Um, polyunsaturated vegetable oils like soy, corn, sunflower, canola, or cottonseed oils. Um, artificial foods like and things like condiments and flavour enhancers that have chemicals in them, um, sweeteners or colours or preservatives. Uh, soy products like tofu, soy milk, soybeans, soy protein and um, processed meats with anything like MSG or iodized salt in them. Um, and then finally, you know, some eczema sufferers have problems with grains, some don't. So just, you know, try and go easy on the grains. Um, you know, safe grains are usually things like, as I said, canola or brown rice. So, you know, if you don't want to eliminate grains completely for the time being, you could just limit to those two and see if they have an impact and see if by eliminating the other, the, the other grains from your diet that, um, you know, you might have an improvement in your symptoms. Um, okay, so that's, that's what I wanted to cover. Um, I hope that's helpful to you. I think, personally, um, for me, elimination has been the most important part of managing eczema. And as I say, you know, I've managed to get myself from severe eczema to the point where I'm not suffering any symptoms. I, I do have, you know, secondary symptoms due to, well, a secondary problem due to the use of topical corticosteroids, but it's not a problem with my skin. But, um, you know, I wish I had known this earlier on. And what's interesting is that there are quite a few diet plans out there um, which tend, seem to benefit eczema sufferers. For example, the GATS diet, the paleo diet, paleo primal diet, a ketogenic diet, which is basically low carbohydrate, um, a raw vegan diet. You know, all of those diets have um, something in common, which is that they eliminate the food that I've, the foods that I've discussed in this um, video. So finding a right, the right diet plan is, is secondary to actually eliminating the nasties or eliminating the potential triggers. Um, so I you know, strongly recommend that you look into a whole foods diet. Um, it might be that you'd have different ratios of say more fats or more proteins or more carbohydrates and I'll go into the, how those ratios match the different diet plans like the paleo or the raw vegan diet and, and I discussed earlier on. But, you know, the first big step is to clean up, clean up your act base, basically, and, and eliminate the foods that I discussed. So I hope that's helpful. I hope I haven't made any glaring errors, but let me know if you do. Um, I'd really like to hear from you, so if you've got any comments or anything to add, or maybe you've got stories about, um, you know, removing certain foods from your diet and, and that helping you, then let me know. And uh, hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.